Indivisible, Illinois, and I'm leaving, live streaming now from where I am in Chicago. I'm in the Andersonville neighborhood. Um, I'm so excited to be with you here today. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers for you, um, including Indivisible National, who's gonna come on the call to give us updates on how we're gonna win, um, not only this year, but how we're looking forward to next year. Um, and that is with um, Nick. Uh, we've got Kim, who's gonna talk about Indivisible Illinois' vote by mail task force. Um, Kim is with NWSOFA. We're really excited to hear from her. We have Lori Ashikawa, who's gonna talk about Working Wednesday, Wisconsin and design your vote from Indivisible Illinois and Indivisible IL-9. We have Alexis Rankle uh, from the Voter Protection Team, the Wisconsin Democrats, and we have, um, hopefully we'll come on, uh, we'll hear from Hiba Muhammad from the Wisconsin Dems. Um, I wanna thank uh, you for joining us today, whether you're here from Chicago where I am or from across the state, we're um, a part of a national network of 6,000 groups who are working to, um, to defeat Donald Trump in November, but also to win on our progressive values um, by electing leaders, um, it, not only in our own communities, but again, across the state. And uh, we're working in coalition with groups, um, with uh, individual groups across the nation to win back the Senate and to hold the House in Illinois. We are so proud of our work that we've done to flip the uh, sixth and the 14th districts. That's with Sean Caston and Lauren Underwood. And we're so excited this year to get Maureen Newman across the finish line in the third district and also in the 16th district with Danny Brzezowski, who has just um, put out her first ad. We're so excited for her. Um, she has so much energy and she has a lot of grassroots support. Please check her out. And we're also actually going, we're looking forward to hearing from her next week on our Indivisible Illinois live stream right here. Um, I am very excited to introduce our, our first speaker, Kim. I remember meeting her uh, a few years back when we were able to meet in person, it was at a picnic. Um, it was about, um, it, was, it was a community picnic. They always do one every year in the suburbs. Um, and Bill and Sarah were um, kind enough to invite me there. Um, it was a great community event. I missed those moments where we could be together. This is a, a substitute for us. You know, We can't go out and uh, be with each other one-on-one -on -one, um, in person. Um, one thing that we love to do during campaign uh, election time is to actually canvas and we can't do that right now. We are, we are motivated and we're activated and Kim's going to um, help us understand uh, where and how we're going to do that together. Um, I also want to point out that I remember at that time seeing the, the cutout of Obama at the picnic <laughs> and uh, Nick and I were there and we took selfies and that was great. Um, I want to share that, you know, when Obama was uh, elected, I was walking down the street in my own neighborhood. And I remember thinking to myself, my God, this man is, he's got to be protected. This man, this man might, you know, he might, he might not make it for, for four years. I just was not sure. Honestly, I wasn't really involved in politics. I didn't know how things worked. And so I just, um, I just kind of cut out and I thought, well, maybe he's, he's got all the answers. Maybe, maybe we're okay now. So, um, here we are today, we're still um, fighting and, you know, putting out videos of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all the atrocities that happen daily on a daily basis and have been happening in, in Chicago and throughout our nation um, with police brutality. Um, we, we have a long ways to go. There are things that we need to do along the way. I'm really excited to be working with folks like Kim on the call and um, I would love to bring her on now. Kim, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your group and why you're here today. So hello everyone, it's great to be with you this evening. And Lenny, thank you so much for that warm introduction. I remember that day um, when we met at Bill's in Arlington Heights at the NWSOFA, Northwest Suburbs Organizing for Action, Indivisible, uh, the picnic. 
at Bill's house, actually, <laughs> in his backyard. And it was just a, a diverse group of people. We were all together there for a common cause. And I, I can really say I understand how you felt when President Obama was running um, for president. You felt like, OK, this man needs to be protected. And um, thank God he was. And he did get a lot of things accomplished. But you know, it's great to be able to come together as a group with a common cause. And um, NWSOFA was a group we all started uh, working just generally with uh, on the President Obama's campaign back in 2018, I'm uh, sorry, 2008. And then after 2012, when he, uh, the, after he won re-election and wasn't able to uh, run anymore, that same group that, that we all met, you know, in that backyard <laughs> for the picnic, we stayed together because we felt like there is, there is a plan that we need to uh, come together and we need to organize and mobilize around issues that we, that we help to um, educate people about during President Obama's um, eight years in office. So it's really great to be able to come together this evening to talk um, to let you know the importance of what's happening right now in this country with um, uh, the, the election that's coming up, because it is going to be one of the most important elections in our life right now, um, as we know it. And so um, I'm happy to be able to come tonight just to be able to talk to you a little bit about the vote by mail and the task force. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start the presentation. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to start this evening by talking a little bit about um, voting statistics for women. So in every US presidential election since um, 1964, more women than men have turned out to vote. And women tend to choose candidates from the Democratic Party more than men do. Women around the world have become more likely to vote for candidates on the left, particularly in Western Europe and Canada. So Trump entered office with an approval rating of 50% among men and 38% among women. And research shows women in the US generally voted in the same, uh, voted the same as men in the early um, decades of the 20th century. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over the general um, uh, uh, election timeline with you. So on June 16th, after the law was signed by Governor Prisker to expand vote by mail, uh, vote by mail applications became available online. Uh, around August 1st, um, applications for mail ballots were automatically sent to anyone who voted in the 2018 general election, the 2019 municipal and the 2020 primary. So on September 24th, ballots will start uh, going out and the um, early voting period begins. On October 19th through the uh, November 2nd, um, starts extended early voting and in-person um, voting as at designated locations. Now, October 29th is the application deadline for mail-in ballots, but I really want you to ignore that date because I want you to please send in your applications for the ballot now. Do not procrastinate. Do not think you have time because you don't. <laughs> don't wait for October 29th. So forget I'm even telling you about that date. Do it now. Get all your family and friends out to, to um, apply for that mail-in ballot. And um, don't wait for October 29th. Um, November 3rd is election day. So if you um, choose to uh, vote by mail, your ballot must be postmarked by this date. And, um, you know, uh, if it's really good that we are trying to get people to vote by mail. Um, but if you need to um, vote at the ballot, um, uh, you know, go ahead. But we would really like for you to try to leave this day for people that need to, to, um, to go to the polls. You know, people that are handicapped or have language barriers, we need uh, pe people like that to be able to um, go to the polls. So make your plan to vote now. Um, register to vote online with the State Board of um, Elections. You can verify your registration uh, at this website. Um, and also um, you can request application for vote by mail ballot uh, at this website as well. Um, we're gonna drop that website, the OVA elections, 
uh, gov. We're going to drop that into the chat. And so, but I'd like for you to inform and encourage uh, other voters, your family and your friends to apply for a, a vote by mail ballot online. So there are secure drop boxes available for, during this election. We recently held phone banks and we found that uh, people in underserved communities are not informed uh, that there are drop boxes, that there will be secure drop boxes available for the election. So to find the drop box near you, um, um, you can reference our free with no ad website uh, at virusfreevotingillinois.org. We'll drop that um, website um, in the chat as well. So again, to find drop boxes that are near you, um, go to our website, Virus Free Voting Illinois, and you'll be able to find those drop boxes. You'll also be able to have uh, access to links um, for you to do your uh, application for your mail-in ballot registration. We have links, we have all the information there. So I really strongly encourage you to go to that website and check it out and share it with your, your friends and your um, networks. So just in, in, in uh, full transparency, I have requested a mail-in ballot online. I am not going to go and vote um, at the polls on the day of. I have requested a mail-in ballot online. I will receive an email when the ballot is mailed to me. And then I will be using a ballot drop box. I'm not going to use USPS. I'm going to use a secure drop box that's going to be available in my area. So um, you can sign up to be a poll worker at our site as well, Virus Free Voting Illinois. So um, please consider fulfilling this civil responsibility. The, there is a severe shortage of poll workers and you will be paid. So in, in Cook County, we have only fulfilled 5,000 of the 8,000 needed poll workers. And one thing we don't want is to on the day of the election, swear in poll workers the day of. And so we need more than 8,000. We need, they, we, they're saying we need, eight, we need 10,000 or more. So um, if you can, and you know what, if you have a Gen Z uh, person in your life or in your family, friends, encourage them to go and be poll workers as well because they will get paid as, also. And, um, Overall, the goal of the Vote by Mail Task Force is to ensure that voting is safe, secure, and accessible in November and beyond for all voters. And our objective is to increase the electorate and uh, mitigate risk to poll workers and voters by promoting requests for vote by mail applications as soon as possible. And uh, we will accomplish this by working with the election authorities to effectively implement the expanded vote by mail statewide legislation. So we do have a uh, vote by mail social media toolkit. It is, um, it's filled with great information. We will drop that link in the chat as well. So check it out. Um, there are so many opportunities for people to get involved with our group, the Northwest Suburbs Organizing for Action and Indivisible Illinois. It's there, we need your help. So if you're looking to be plugged in somewhere, just you know, reach out to one of us and we'll be happy to talk with you and find the best way for you to be, to be able to uh, help on our various teams. And one thing that we're very excited about I wanted to, to uh, mention is that please, if you can, uh, join our in Northwest Suburbs Organizing for Action and Indivisible Vote by Mail Twitter Storm every Wednesday from noon to two up to November. So what we do is we all come together. It's a great time. We have tweets that are already um, made up, pre-written. We have um, graphics and we just tweet. We tweet as many, we send out as many tweets as possible using the virus free voting hashtag. This past Wednesday, I believe, and Karen, keep me honest here. I believe we had 1.9 million impressions this past week and um, it was, and we really had a great time and it's very effective. We're reaching out to a large group of people and it's fun. So if you can join us this Wednesday, we uh, are going to drop a Zoom registration link in the chat and we'll be happy to join you, for you to join us um, to help spread the word about virus-free voting 
and um, any other things that are associated with the election as well. And I believe that's it for that, Thank you. For that portion. Okay. Thank you so much, Kim. I want to I want to say that um, I'm I'm excited about the Twitter storm too, especially now. I believe that there's going to be a um, training before the tweet storm. So if you have never tweeted before in your life, um, this is a great time to just come in and learn about the platform. You know that this is the um, you know, the person in the White House right now is using this platform, abusing this platform, sp spreading a lot of disinformation and uh, to millions of people. So why not um, us on this call and others who share this live stream um, that send out the message that you are able to sign up for t Twitter. Um, it is free and others are willing to help you along the way in your journey to learn about this, this um, platform. I also want to point out that um, Thank you for pointing out that uh, you, Kim, might, may or may not be actually using your vote by mail ballot. But you know, across the nation, we already know that there are some states who have already dropped their their ballots, like um, North Carolina and um, Pennsylvania. We you know Wisconsin's coming up very soon, and these are happening. Um, early voting is happening before the first presidential. De debate. So I believe the first de presidential debate is on the 29th. So um, we are we are in we are in it right now. We want people to think about voting not in November, voting September for some mm -hmm. people, for mm -hmm. October for some people. Do you want to do you want to close us out on uh, some last thoughts about that? Well, I just you know I've said as I said before, this is the one of the the most important ele elections in in our lifetime, and we need to get as many people out to vote as we possibly can. There are different various um, um, rules uh, about the voting across the states, across the, the um, uh, uh, a country, a lot of voter suppression out there. And so, but it's really important that we really get in the Gen Z group involved and, and get them to work the polls. We really, really, really need poll workers. We need Gen Z to get out there and to help out. And we need the young people to, to get to uh, vote. We have, um, just as a side note, we started a, um, a podcast, a Gen Z podcast um, for the Generation Z um, uh, to give them a voice because um, a lot of them feel like they're not heard, but some of them can, cannot vote, but some of them are coming of age to be able to vote. And so we, re we would like for you to check out our podcast. Uh, we'll drop uh, a link to our first episode. We just started last week, the, G the Conversation Z. And we'll drop that link in so you could check out the podcast. But really, if you know a Generation Z person that really wants to um, get their voice and have their voice heard, um, please drop us a line. We'll send you uh, information about it. And they can be a guest on our show. And they can actually uh, co-host or host a show. We're looking to be able to give them a voice and make them feel like um, they are not powerless, but powerful. So we're looking forward to be able to to just use that that generation to help at the polls. They will be paid, and also um, just to get the word out and to encourage our generation. Some of us in in our generation are like, oh, you know, it, it, things are never going to change. But if you've watched um, during a lot of the civil unrest that's going on in this country right now, there's a lot of Gen Z. Uh, and millennials that are out there that are marching and in protest for all of the police brutality that we see that's going on that has really changed the, uh, the country. It's really changing the country and it's gonna change for the, the best, I believe in the long run, but it's important to just continue to give that generation a voice and the millennials a voice and give them a platform. And so the podcast is one way to give them that platform. Thank you, Kim. I wonder if you would be so kind as to uh, introduce our next speaker. Okay, I'd love to. Uh, Lori Ash uh, Ashikawa. Um, Lori and I worked together on a diversity and an inclusion 
uh, group for uh, Indivisible Illinois. We meet uh, every Sunday. So if that's a group that you're interested in joining, just drop <laughs> us a line and we'll, <laughs> and we'll bring you into that group with us. We work very closely together in that group. Um, Lori is, she's very much involved with work in the underserved communities. And that's one of the focus of our um, diversity and inclusion group that I am, I'm actually a co-lead of that group along with Rose Colosino. And Rose couldn't be here tonight, but she will be back next next time, right? And so um, Rose and I are co-leads for that group. But Lori is fantastic, phenomenal person. And I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Lori so that she could talk about uh, all of the um, activities that she's involved in. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kim. Um, it's really great working with Kim too. And it's so funny. Um, so many of us work in our own little areas and then all of a sudden we'll show up in an event and we'll see someone who we've been on a zoom call with or we've known from another sphere of our existence and it's always just so exciting <laughs> so anyway my name is Lori Ashikawa and I am a member of Indivisible IL-9 which is Andersonville Edgewater on the north side um, I'm also a member of Indivisible Illinois and I serve on the Social Justice Committee for the Institute for Nonviolence Chicago. So um, my interests over, over the time, I had a lot of interest with um, gun violence prevention. And I found that that sort of ran head on into my concern about um, racial inequity in our city and in the country. And I feel like this moment in time, all these all these issues are starting to come together and it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so what Kim was saying about the things that the, um, vote, the vote by mail task force is doing, we are really using a multi-pronged approach at getting information out into many different communities. So that's why we're doing social media. We're also doing um, the phone banking that Kim mentioned and that is, um, we're, we're triggering or we're uh, focusing on the areas on the south and west sides, um, particularly zip codes that we were able to get through the organization Communities Partnering for Peace, which is um, a group that is under the Metropolitan Family Services for the city of Chicago, but they go in to the 22 communities in the city that are most likely to have gun violence and they're the most um, under-resourced communities in the city. And we found that um, if we can call into those communities, a lot of the people that we are speaking to don't have access to computers. Um, they're not hooked into regular media the, re the way the rest of the city is. And so we can uh, perform a valuable service there. We're doing on the ground distribution of palm cards um, to people a lot of people um, who are only reached through the communities partnering for peace, which sends street outreach workers out to um, intervene in um, violence prevention. And so while they're going out um, trying to intervene in, in violence, they're also doing a lot of educating around the pandemic. So as, as soon as COVID-19 hit, they were going into communities and they were talking to people um, about safety, health safety. So actually they became health workers. They were passing out PPE, they were passing out diapers, they were helping people with food. And we figured they could help us also to get information about voting into these communities. And when you go out onto the streets, it is really amazing to be registering people out there. They are really, uh, they wanna be engaged. A lot of them don't have the means, they don't have the correct ID, they know the last four digits of their social security, but you can really guide them um, into feeling as if they are invested in the whole process and they really do want to have their voices heard. So we have social media, we have um, these phone calls, we have the on the ground palm cards that we distribute, and then um, we came to I really wanted to use art as a way to reach out into the city. And so I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, so bear with me. Okay. All right. I hope you can see this. 
So after the George Floyd uh, demonstrations, um, I was noticing that there was a lot of art going up on boarded up uh, storefronts downtown and in other parts of the city. And I was trying to figure out of a way to use art to get information about voting into communities. And um, a friend of mine, Fanny Moy, came up with an idea of doing an online art project, which would be um, if people from, all, from communities all over the city and eventually all over the state could contribute art um, that was along the lines of how I want my future to look. So even if we're not trained as artists, I feel like we're all artists if we have a vision of the future. And so we came up with this idea, you could submit an art piece, I mean, art, it could be anyone, kids, parents, grandparents, friends, you could submit a square piece of art. Um, it could be a drawing, it could be a painting, it could be a collage, it could be a poem. It could be really anything that's flat and 2D. You take a picture of it and then you just email it to us at designyourvoteil at gmail.com. And then we would submit your piece of art um, into our big composite picture and we would do uh, hopefully a composite that is a mosaic of our state and we could have um, something maybe about what city you're from and your age and your first name if you wanted. So if you go to our website, which we will drop into the chat, there is um, the website is designyourvote.com and there are links there also to register to vote to apply to vote by mail. Um, there's some links about uh, the history of voter suppression in the country, so some educational links also. Um, so that is the Design Your Vote Community Art Project, and that's just meant to be something for fun. There's no money involved, no prizes. Um, it's really meant to be for the community. So that is my uh, role in, this, in the state of Illinois. Now I'm going to shift a little bit since the second half of our program is dealing with uh, Wisconsin. And I want to talk about the other thing that I'm doing that is very dear to my heart. And that is um, phone banking into Wisconsin to um, recruit poll workers, poll observers, and people to recruit more people to be poll workers and poll observers. So every Wednesday morning, I run a phone bank from 10 a.m. to 11.45 Central Time. Um, we're going to put a link to sign up into the chat. It's called Working Wednesdays, and we are concentrating on Wisconsin voter protection. They are looking for a lot of poll workers right now. Here were the poll numbers a week ago. Milwaukee needed 750. Madison 200 to 300, etc. So when we do these phone calls, um, it's pretty amazing. We talk to people. Uh, there are Democrats that we're talking to. We ask them if they are willing to be poll workers, poll observers, or before we were also recruiting hotline volunteers, but I think they have filled that component. Um, but people are really happy to receive our calls. And these are Democrats that we're calling and we sort of guide them through the sort of uncomfortable feeling of, do I really want to devote my time to doing this? And the thing is that poll workers in Wisconsin, it's a paid position as it is in Illinois. Um, those people have to be inside the poll. So those are generally younger people. But we are also recruiting poll observers. That could be a position that could be outside. You could be rolling from place to place and you don't have to live in the jurisdiction. So there are actually a lot of uh, people going up from Illinois. I'm gonna be one of them to be a poll observer on November 3rd. And you can even go up um, for the early voting period. They need people to be observing what's going on up there um, all the way during their early voting period because there is a lot of voter suppression and you wanna make sure that things are running smoothly. So those are my two big things. I'm gonna unshare. And I hope that you will check out the links in the chat and that you will be able to join either us at Working Wednesday or you can always go to the uh, Democratic Party of Wisconsin's website. There's 
tons of stuff to do there as far as volunteering. They do these, these uh, phone banks every single day of the week. And I think our next guest, we're gonna be moving on to Wisconsin, Lenny. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lori, for everything that you're doing. I can't thank you enough for your energy and for bringing in community every week that you've been, you know, involved that I've known you, you've brought more people to our meetings, more people interested in our phone calls. So um, I also want to point out that Lori is a is an artist. She's a performing artist and a, and a violinist, and she's bringing her the beauty of what she does professionally into this activism work. Um, you don't need to be a professional activist to do this, this work. In fact, we just need regular people because that's really what grassroots is all about, um, is powered to the people. Um, and we, you know, we are going to do this when there are more of us doing it. So the lift is not so hard. So Lori's not out there <laughs> every day and not sleeping. No, we need more people to help us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for helping to build our community, not only on the north side of Chicago, but also throughout Chicago where we live. Um, you know, um, thank you, Lori, for pointing out the fact that you can be a poll observer in Wisconsin. I know that you're scheduled to go up there on uh, in November to be a poll observer in the state of Illinois. It's the same thing. Uh, we are looking for poll workers and poll observers throughout Illinois and voter suppression can look like many different things. I'm excited to have um, Alexis on again so that they can share with us all the many ways <laughs> that they they help to suppress the vote. Um, elsewhere in the Illinois, we have 108 election authorities. In Wisconsin, they have over 1,100. So um, thank you, Alexis, for being here. And also, I want to point out that I'm really excited to hear from Luis, who's also here on the call, I hope, um, uh, to hear from you too. And after that, we're going to also hear from Hiba Mohammed also from the Wisconsin Dem. Thank you, Wisconsin Dems, for being here. And thank you for all you're doing, Alexis. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexis Ranhel. Uh, I am uh, here from the Wisconsin Democrats. Uh, my pronouns are they and them. And I am a Deputy Voter Protection Director uh, for the Wisconsin Dems. Um, Lori, you did a fantastic job of plugging a lot of our programs uh, and stealing a little bit of my thunder, but that's fine. That's fine, because I have a, a ton of, of really exciting um, updates as well. Um, so there's so much going on in Wisconsin right now. Uh, and in particular, uh, for our programming, we've got um, not only what all of our uh, organizers are doing, uh, but we have a voter protection team that is building a voter protection program specifically uh, to, uh, to, to protect the vote and to make sure that every Wisconsinite uh, can cast their ballots uh, safely and securely. Um, today, uh, we had our organization-wide get out the vote training um, because uh, ballots dropped today. We got our absentee ballots started being delivered. Uh, and so voters uh, started casting their ballots today in Wisconsin. We've got 47 days of get out the vote. Uh, it's going to be a marathon, uh, but it is going to be fantastic. Um, and to that end, our voter protection team has rolled out some really incredible resources. Um, uh, first and foremost, our website, vote.wisdems.org. Uh, that's vote.wisdems.org, and that'll be uh, linked there. Uh, we went live with information uh, for counties all over Wisconsin for their early vote locations, their drop box locations uh, that they can return their ballots to, um, as well as uh, a voting guide for all of the the little nooks and crannies of wild, the wild west of, that is Wisconsin election law. Um, we also uh, went live with our voter assistance hotline uh, that we have uh, currently staffed and answering calls and also folks can leave voicemails and we'll get back to them within 24 hours to answer any voting questions. We actually trained uh, 600 voter assistant hotline volunteers uh, this week alone uh, to help us with that incredible project. Um, and then, of course, recruiting poll workers and poll observers. Uh, and that's my, my big ask for, for everyone here. Uh, we have uh, so, so much, uh, so much to do uh, for poll observing. Uh, and that's something that folks uh, um, from, from Illinois can help with uh, in coming and helping us uh, watch, the, keep an eye on the polls and uh, to know what's going on and to make sure folks can safely cast their ballots. Um, we, 
Uh, our early voting starts on October 20th, so we're just over a little, a little over a month away, uh, and we've got a link that's going to be shared for our Save the Date program uh, for poll observers uh, to come in to either help us on Election Day on November 3rd or in that window uh, between October 20th and November 3rd. Um, and uh, of course, for all of these things, we're also pushing our uh, recruitment phone banks uh, to get folks who are interested in helping out, uh, who've let us know uh, that they want to get plugged in. Uh, we're calling them and uh, getting them signed up uh, for, for poll observing and for hotline trainings. And for those who live in Wisconsin for poll worker trainings, um, this past weekend, we had a weekend of action uh, phone bank uh, that was, uh, we had a special guest, Bradley Whitford uh, from uh, the West Wing fame there, kicked us, uh, kicked us off. And we had over 130 volunteers make over 6,000 calls to recruit poll workers and poll observers in Wisconsin. Um, and that's something that you can absolutely help us with. So please uh, use that link to sign up for our poll observer trainings. Check out our website uh, to, to join in our phone banks, uh, like Lori's uh, Working Wednesday's phone bank. Um, and uh, we'd, we'd love to have you. That's awesome. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for all that you're doing to protect the vote in Wisconsin. And again, I'll shout out again to, to Lori. Thank you for all you're doing as well. And um, I want to say hello to Luis who's also new on the team. Thank you for being here and for uh, joining our, and we would love to have you every single time. Um, I wanna pass it to Hiba because Hiba's always here again, uh, as well as Alexis to share with us any grassroots updates that um, that you have to, to give us. We love the energy that you're bringing to these calls. It's so important for us to know. Uh, last week, I wanna point out, if you didn't catch the um, live stream last week, we we're so, Grateful to have some some super volunteers from Wisconsin uh, who are motivating and activating Wisconsin to uh, get out the vote. Um, and it's just it was it was really something and very powerful to hear from them how our work is going to impact um, their daily lives. So thank you, Hiba, for coordinating that. Hiba. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, as always, happy to be here. Um, actually, you know, part of me was wondering if, if I need to be here anymore because I feel like everyone does such a good job presenting. Um, and that's that's really the goal here, right? Organizing ourselves out of a job. So um, this is wonderful. Thank you, Alexis, for sharing everything. Um, thank you to everyone on this call. Um, I just have a couple of updates here um, and maybe an anecdote, which is um, today I've given a couple of presentations. Um, the first time I presented after Senator Tammy Baldwin. Um, and so kind of felt like couldn't live up to that. And now I'm presenting after Alexis um, and Lori as well. So just my luck today that <laughs> this is the order of things. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited to be here to share with you all the upcoming opportunities that we have. Um, Alexis covered all of our, our um, photo protection work very well. And, and frankly, right now, that's a lot of what our focus is, is making sure that as ballots have dropped, that people have the information they need um, to successfully return their ballots. Um, we have weekends of action almost every single weekend. Uh, actually, I take that back, every single weekend uh, between now and election day um, and could really use help making calls to voters to make sure that they know this information. Um, we have very specific requirements in Wisconsin and so we're training our volunteers again. Um, we're giving you the resources that you need and making sure that you feel comfortable having these conversations before we put you on the phones to do so. Um, so for anyone who it's been waiting for you know the last few weeks here to get involved. Maybe you're a little bit nervous. Um, we are there for you. We have volunteer leaders who have been in your shoes. They started as nervous first time phone bankers and they're ready and willing to help you through that process. Um, so please consider joining us. We're gonna drop a couple of links to our next two weekends of action um, so that you can sign up with us right away. Um, a point that I wanna emphasize about um, how important the, the, uh, the ballots dropping is, uh, we have an event tonight a Parks and Rec reunion through the WISDEMS um, where we'll have uh, Adam Scott and Aubrey Plaza walking through how to complete your absentee ballot and making sure that folks know how to do that. So if you're interested, um, go to WISDEMS.org. You can sign up. They'll be doing a free public event um, at eight o'clock central that you can tune into to see them um, walk through the absentee ballot request process and completion process. So we're very fortunate to have that support and that attention. Um, and just really, I think, again, reemphasizes the importance of getting this right so that voters have their votes good um, and we can continue to focus on turning out the people who do need additional support. Um, so thank you. I will turn it back over and as always appreciate the time tonight. 
Thank you, Hiba and Alexis. And I guess the question that I might have for you is, did you have a watch party for uh, the Princess Bride readings? Oh my gosh, yes, that was incredible. Um, it was so cool. <laughs> there is a recording somewhere. I think we'll be sharing that out um, in the future here, but uh, it was incredible. And if, if you joined us for that, thank you. Um, we're very proud of how successful that event was. Thank you, Hiba. Thank you, Alexis. Um, I want to, I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker, Marissa Miller um, from She Votes Illinois, president of She Votes Illinois, who's been a fantastic partner of Indivisible and women's marches throughout the last couple of years. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to Marissa earlier uh, last week. And um, in really, this conversation today is exactly what we need to continue to do, which is to build out our relationships. I'm really thankful for Hiba um, for continuing to come to these calls. Absolutely, <laughs> you have organized yourself out of these calls for sure. Um, and it's because we, we understand the importance of, of what we need to do now and we're running with it. So I'm glad to um, hear from Marissa who's got many initiatives that uh, on other ways that people can plug in, especially those who are on social media um, or anybody who just wants to, to win. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Marissa now. Thanks Marissa for being here. Awesome, thank you so much, Lenny. Um, it is fantastic to be here with everyone tonight. Uh, Wisconsin is near and dear to my heart since I'm from Green Bay, the natural arch nemesis of the Chicago people, which uh, I currently reside. Um, so I just wanted to uh, you know, briefly mention She Votes Illinois is about to hit our three year anniversary. So we're a baby pack. Um, we're just interested in supporting women running for office and, um, you know, we're interested in supporting women in general of wherever they are in their political journey, um, whether it's like working for a campaign or it's your first time voting. Um, and when women get elected, we wanna make sure that they're supported if they're doing a good job. Um, we wanna have their backs. So we try to promote their fundraisers and their policies. Um, we try to promote the fact that they are in fact running. So we currently have a social media series about um, 40 or 50 women who are running for different races all over Illinois on the state and local level. Um, so please feel free to check that out. Um, so let's get into mode of vote. And if we could do um, screen sharing in a moment, that would be great. Um, but basically, like everyone else, we had plans for this election cycle that got a little thwarted. Um, so we're searching, you know, high and low for ways to connect with people virtually. And we wound up with a platform called Motivote. Um, and they're one of those rarities that are in tech spaces because it was built by two women, two younger women who are awesome. And um, they are basically interested in turning any social network into a voting team. So we're like, we're a team. So why can't we start our own dashboard with them? Um, and the principle behind Motivote is just that it's a personal assistant for all things voting. So it helps you make your deadlines. It helps you find information on candidates and issues. It lets you get your friends good information. And most importantly, turn that information into action. Um, so they studied uh, these things they called micro barriers to voting um, that just basically are all the little things that get into someone's way where they're like, oh, I'm going to vote. Of course, I'm going to vote. And then, you know, they just forget to make a deadline or they're just not paying close enough attention to, uh, you know, like how a mail-in ballot would work. Um, and they miss something easy and it's something that is preventable if they just put a little bit more forethought into their game plan. And you want people to feel secure in whatever voting plan it is that they're making. So they break the actions you need to take and the steps you need to take to vote into just really small steps. And the best part about it is it's going to lead to potential for prizes. So like not only are you getting like these small steps throughout um, your, your mode of vote journey here and it's really like broken down into like making it very approachable, um, you are also going to be entered to win raffle prizes throughout the process as you complete these action steps. So if we could do a screen share now, I'm gonna walk you through our portal, which actually just launched today. So like an like two hours ago. So it's a great uh, time for me to come on to your Zoom here. Uh, 
All right, are we working? Great. Um, so this is the mode of vote platform um, that we have currently signed up. So we decided to get a little bit gimmicky about it because who doesn't love a good competition? Um, I am really, like I said, passionate about voters in Wisconsin um, and we are a primarily Illinois um, based organization as far as our mission and as far as the voters that we are trying to uh, contact and reach out to. So we were asking ourselves, how do we get it so that we can get participation from voters in Michigan and voters in Wisconsin and voters all across the Midwest into a project? Well, then we were like, let's make it into a competition. Let's just have a thing where it doesn't matter if you're in a school in Wisconsin or if you're a random family member in Arizona, you can all come and be part of the same project um, and really you know, have a fun, connected way to participate in this election. So we're calling it Illinois versus every other state because um, you know, it, it's a pretty uh, specific uh, breakdown there, but um, the competition is obviously not sponsored by J.B. Pritzker or any other actual official. It's just literally our board being like, we'll take you all on. Um, and the only point behind the competition is so, you know, people enjoy bragging rights. People enjoy the camaraderie. People enjoy Pokemon Go and they enjoy like walking out and going to their gyms on Pokemon Go. And they enjoy, um, you know, making sure that, um, you know, they're winning at something. Um, so a lot of people just, you know, they find it difficult to find something meaningful in voting perhaps because the results aren't necessarily tangible. Like there's not something directly in your face that, um, you know, immediately tells you that you did the right thing by voting. Um, you have to, you know, have a more long-term mentality. That is not the case with this. So if you are gonna join our platform, you have the two teams uh, between, and as you can see, just launched today, so there's only three members, um, Illinois versus everyone else. Um, you have um, different actions that are broken down onto your action portal um, throughout, and this is where the point structure comes into play. Um, so it really, like, first of all, you're going to check and see, you know, if you're eligible to vote, and then it walks you through like, how do you find your election? How do you get election reminders? Um, and then it lets you do like smaller things like checking your status, which is gonna be you know, somewhat critical in this election. Um, walks you through uh, selecting your voting method, which you know, as you can see, just really gets specific into um, exactly how you're gonna plan to vote. Um, and it will send you reminders that meet you where you're at in your election and voting journey. Um, and then there's some more specific things that we really just wanted to pay attention to, to educate the people that are using this portal. Um, so just talking about like the graduated income tax amendment here in Illinois and giving people an opportunity to learn about that being on the ballot. Um, as Lori was talking about earlier, we're involved with Design Your Vote. So we wanted to you know, give people a nice art break and check out uh, some great art, even if they're not in Illinois and they can't participate. Um, gonna admit this guy, even though I don't know who he is. Um, so it, you know, it really just allows you to incentivize the things that are important to your organization. So we really try to hit kind of a happy medium between you know these critical um, actions and also adding a little bit of levity or you know interesting things that are are related. Um, so essentially, you know you're just looking at what's going to work to get your people out to vote. You're looking at like, small steps, you're looking at reminders, you're looking at encouragement from your friends, and you're looking for positive reinforcement. So that's where the prize start comes into play, because as you are committing, um, or as you are fulfilling all these different actions throughout, um, you're going to accumulate points, and you can enter to win like a signed copy of Michelle Obama's book, or you can get um, some voting socks, whatever you want. We're also looking at um, more local sponsorship opportunities since you know we're trying to especially incentivize um, our Illinois contacts into reaching out to all of their contacts around the country. Um, 
I just saw people waving, so I wasn't sure if I was being cut off or, or something there. Um, anyway, uh, so this is the critical part of the entire project here, obviously, is you're going to invite your friends. Even your friends who are your trusted voters who have never missed an election are so critical to this platform because they're the ones who are going to be also inviting people or looking for an excuse to talk to people about voting um, and just making it a little bit, as I like to call it, sexier. You know, you're looking for something that's a good conversational point rather than being like, you know, hey, have you, you know, checked out the, the state's website, seen if you can vote. At least this way, you also have the additional hook of talking about, you know, I can get my voting socks. Um, so whatever approach is going to actually translate to your friends, I think there's something here for everyone, essentially. Um, you know, we're just really looking to make sure that we get as much turnout from all of our social groups as possible. And I know I speak for everyone on the call, you know, when I say that. Um, so this is just another tool for you to, you know, go to your friends and be like, if you get on this platform, they're going to make it really easy for you and you can win um, different prizes throughout. Because um, fundamentally, it just comes down to how do you incentivize people to do something that, you know, they don't really want to do or they don't necessarily understand um, the point of. So that's what our MotoVote uh, panel looks like. Um, you can check it out at She Votes Illinois on Facebook um, if you'd like a direct link or on the Facebook Live. Um, it should be in the chat there as well. Um, I also want to mention, uh, you know, another tool to get people out to vote um, that She Votes Illinois is sponsoring is going to be a panel that we are hosting on Monday. Uh, September 21st, and you can get points for attending that panel or watching it on YouTube. See, you can incentivize anything on here. Um, and it's going to have guests from uh, Women Employed, Equality Illinois, NAACP, um, and Illinois Now. And so we're going to have a great panel that's just really talking about not taking voting for granted and really just trying to convey that politics and policy you know, a lot of people think that they can opt out or they that politics doesn't touch their lives or I'm not into politics. And that's just absolutely not true because it obviously touches everything from the water you drink to the air you're breathing to the dog park that you want to get down the street. Um, so it really just having something that connects whatever issue to a voter um, that's possible is what we're looking to uh, really cover in the panel next week. So uh, I think that takes us through our mode of vote journey. And if anyone has any questions on the call, um, I'd love to hear them. Can I interject something? Yes, absolutely. I had Lori here. Anyway, Hi, I'm so sorry, Marissa. I must have been nervous. I was. <laughs> Part of what I was going to talk about was how important She Votes Illinois has been to the Design Your Vote project. Great. It's practically the whole project. No worries. I mean, no. you have really wonderful people. I mean, we have some high school students who've come on and helped us work on the whole project. Um, our web designer is from your group. Jen, she's amazing. Um, Maureen, your other co-leader is just a really wonderful organizer. And you guys are so, gals, excuse me, you are so um, on top of everything. I love this game and I think you're all really wonderful. <laughs> well, that is greatly appreciated, Lori. And we, I know that everyone has spoken really highly about the project and they're really excited about it. Um, so much so that I was like, can I incentivize this through points? And Maureen was like, yes. And then I was like, well, how do I do that? If we're having a competition, I have to be faithful to the spirit of the competition. And I can't just like, you know, give points to Illinois voters all the time, even though we are taking on all 49 states, you know, it's an ethical competition here. So uh, it, it'll be a great opportunity for people to check out the project. And we're really excited to be able to add that to this platform too. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Marissa, for coming on. Um, we'd love to keep connected with you. Of course we do through Designer Vote and Lori working with you, but um, we're going to also, if we haven't already, share into the chats um, how to continue to 
uh, work with you, She Votes Illinois, and also Motivote, which is very cool. Um, we're all looking for ways to continue to um, motivate our own networks, and this is a fantastic way to do it. I love this Illinois versus everyone else idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I love games too and winning things. So we all want to win in November, but we all want to win beyond. So I want to also, um, again, thank you for being here. And we're going to pass it to Nick, who is our national uh, regional organizer for Indivisible National. Um, we did not have a national person um, for a very long time. Um, and then I, I remember meeting Nick way back when um, he was still an organizer with um, NARAL and we're still fighting for the same things in different ways. Um, Nick, you've been in a great support system uh, on a personal level, but also in this activism level, it, it, it feels great. And it also um, makes us feel very confident in what we're doing to know that we're a part of this national um, network of groups working towards the same thing. So thank you, Nick, for being here. And I'd love for you to take the mic. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. So um, just following up on something Lenny just said, talking about uh, our national goals and how we're all really fighting for the same things. Um, here at Indivisible, we are part of a national network of nearly 6,000 groups across the country. Um, here in Illinois, we have around 80 and just multiply that out. And we are really doing the work in every community to flip the Senate, grow our majority in the House and elect Joe Biden on top of doing all the state and local work that so many of our groups uh, continue to do every day. So tonight, I just wanna close everything out by really making one push for our, the best way we can reach voters across the country over the next seven weeks. And that is making phone calls. Um, since we can't knock on doors like we used to in campaigns past, calls are the most effective way where we can increase turnout, anywhere between uh, nearly four and between four and six percent in some cases. So uh, we are making calls every day at Indivisible National to swing states and states with very important Senate races. Um, if you take a look at our national phone bank calendar, you can see everything on there. But I really want to highlight some of the states that we're calling over the next few days and why they're so important. <clears throat> so particularly uh, between now and Sunday, we'll be making calls in North Carolina. And I got a little taste of it today as well. Um, but North Carolina is incredibly important. Uh, it's been a longtime goal for Democratic candidates since President Obama uh, won the state in 2008. And even though the margins have been very close in recent cycles, there's a real opportunity this year to win the state for Joe Biden and a, Demo a Democratic Senate majority. Um, the race between Biden and Trump in North Carolina is very tight and could just come down to a few thousand votes. Um, so we know that those thousand votes are going to be made up by direct voter contact. Um, and in the Senate this time, we have a strong Democratic challenger named Cal Cunningham, who's taking on the incumbent GOP Senator Tom Tillis. Uh, defending Tillis is a major priority for Senate Republicans, but Cunningham has held a slight lead on the incumbent by a narrow margin ever since the primary. Um, so we really need to keep doing the work in North Carolina to make sure he wins. Um, next up on Monday, we'll be making calls into Maine, which I'm sure many people on the call and watching the live stream know who the Senator in Maine is that we're targeting. Uh, Susan Collins has pretty much slept walk for the constituents of Maine for years now. Uh, she has allowed for Brett Kavanaugh to become a Supreme Court justice, and she has sat back as Donald Trump subverts the rule of law. Uh, she has betrayed her constituents time and time again, despite being so disappointed, uh, but we are going to make sure she does not get elected again. A Democratic challenger Sarah Gideon has a real chance to flip this seat and our work in Maine could even add an additional electoral vote to Joe Biden. Um, now the last state over the next week is Arizona and we'll be making calls to them between Tuesday and Thursday next week. Um, in Arizona it has become one of the most flippable states in the past year. Um, it's not typically considered a front line for Democrats uh, but uh, this year, polls are really showing Biden with a modest lead over uh, Trump. Um, in 2018, Senator Sinema's victory over Martha McSally is also encouraging, uh, with McSally now up for election against another particularly strong candidate, Mark Kelly, 
Arizona is yet another one of the best bets to flip a Senate seat and get that Democratic majority. Uh, Martha McSally is yet another strong supporter of Trump and has stood by his mangled response to COVID even while cases in Arizona have skyrocketed. Uh, voters in Arizona have rejected her once before and we are ready to make sure they reject her soundly again in November. Uh, we just have to do the work to make sure we get there. Uh, being an incumbent poses a major advantage for Mar Martha McSally and working for Mark Kelly, a super exciting candidate, and Joe Biden will also help down the ballot in congressional districts, particularly with Hiral Tempernini in uh, the sixth congressional district in Arizona, where she is taking on a five-term incumbent Republican David Stryker. So all of these things relate to our state and local work. And these are just three of some of our target states. But importantly, Midwest-wide, we know how important Wisconsin is. And as our Midwestern group here, um, we want to make sure we turn Wisconsin blue in November. So uh, we are making an entire day of action for Wisconsin on October 10th, uh, Midwest wide, and it's going to be calling for change. It's a phone bank with bingo and prizes added. So that is another theme of the night. Uh, but we will be making calls for the whole day into Wisconsin, uh, making sure we chat with as many voters as possible. Um, to really do the work. Um, that is something that I will continue to say on every call. Uh, we can all watch MSNBC and get agitated at what the president is doing, but unless you are on the phones making these calls, uh, we don't want anybody to wake up on November 4th or whenever it takes to process all the votes and wonder, what could I have done more? This is the moment we have seven weeks and stuff needs to be done. Uh, the more voters we contact, the more the chances are that we'll have Joe Biden in the White House, we'll get the Senate, and we can finally reform our democracy. Nick, thank you so much. It's absolutely it. If, if, if you've never done anything from, the, from 2017 on, if you don't do anything at all, um, sign up for that um, day of phone banking with us, October 10th. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There are prizes. I've seen the bingo card. It's so fun. <laughs> so please join us. We would love to have you. Um, I want to say thank you to the speakers um, who were on this call, including Marissa Miller from She Votes Illinois and Kim Garnett from um, Northwest Suburban OFA and Lori Ashikawa from Indivisible IL-9 and Indivisible Illinois. Um, and also Kelly and Karen who were on the back end helping us um, um, admin this call. Thank you, Nick, for, join, for joining us from Indivisible National. There is so much to do, but if we all band together and do just a little bit, if you can dedicate two hours between now and um, next month, that'd be fantastic. Two hours, we'll take it. Um, and you don't need a professional. We will guide you in your way because um, every single person counts. I'm personally excited today because I have a family member on this call. I said to myself, if I could bring in one more family member to a call, I'll be, um, I'll feel like a successful activist. Because if you can organize your friends and family, you get a gold star. So I'm giving myself a gold star today. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate you all. We'll see you next time. And let's just keep going. Let's go to win. <laughs>